so thank you for joining us at the second Open Networking Summit in Europe. Uh, as you know, ONS has been going on for almost a decade now. But this is the second time we are doing it in Europe. And before I even get started, uh, I want to sort of thank the events team for this amazing venue. So can we get a big round of applause for the events team? I mean, we do conferences all the time, but this is, you know, amazing. And even better, it is symbolic, right? If you have been to one of the uh, uh, tutorial rooms, uh, there's, a, there's a, skeletal, a skeleton of a veil hanging from the ceiling, um, and it reminds me of proprietary technologies, right? So very, very apt, and here we are, Open Networking Summit. Um, so before we get started, and I give you my sort of share some views here, some housekeeping announcements. Um, obviously, first of all, we want to thank all of our sponsors, Diamond sponsor Ericsson, um, and of course, Platinum Sun sponsors CNCF, uh, Huawei, and OpenTap. And then I want to thank the program committee. This, their, their job is really hard. If, you ha if some of you are here, if you're not you know, familiar with how they do it, CFPs get submitted, they look at it, and then pick, figure out the best content that's possible for you guys. Now, I'm also pleased to report this time uh, we organize the content in sort of five tracks, um, you know, IoT and Edge, AI ML, um, 5G and networking ops, cloud native, uh, network enterprise IT, etc. And so, uh, they had a tough job, but again, can we get a big round of applause for the program committee? Thank you. <laughs> now, if you don't like some of the sessions, it's them, okay? But that's not going to happen. I can, try, I can guarantee you that. Uh, the other thing is there's a schedule on the go, so you have your batch. There's, you know, just scan the QR code and you'll get that right away. Uh, also, as you can see, uh, some of the conference rooms, so there are five conference tracks and two unconference tracks. Uh, some of them are, uh, half of them are on this floor, which is, I think they call it the first floor. Um, and then the others are on the ground floor right below us, so you can see all that. And then uh, the networking app, so for those of you who want to connect with others, here you go. It's very easy to join. Uh, I have heard a lot of good feedback from, uh, from the attendees on this one, so please do it. And then, of course, the, the, the free stuff, right? So uh, your batch gets you into the zoo during lunch hours for free. And that's what we love, right? The networking folks love free. Uh, so please do that. Please take advantage of that. I believe it's all three days uh, we can get access. And, and then, of course, there's the coffee and uh, breaks in the technical showcase downstairs. So with that, let me go ahead and uh, sort of start with uh, my few thoughts. Um, so I thought, let's, let's look at the last one year, and then look at five years, and then look at the next five years, and kind of what has happened significantly that has revolutionized the open industry. And I could capture it in one sentence, which is community collaboration to commercialization. So the question is, what next? And how do I frame the whole thing? And so what I thought would do is I'd share some thoughts on sort of the journey till date, uh, where the next three years are going, and make some bold predictions for 2025. Now, keep in mind, for the press out here, uh, I'm going to sprinkle some, of course, cool news and some hot news right in here as the press releases come out. And I'll point out, obviously, uh, on, on what those things are. So let's start with the journey. Uh, journey has been very, very fast in just the last five years. There were projects that got created, projects moved to products, products moved to profit, community collaboration moved to commercialization, right? What got us there? Open, disruptive technology. Virtualization technology, disaggregation technology, automation technology, and cloud-native technologies. These, you know, if there was no technology, we would not be here. So let's kind of baseline that. 
But with the SDN NFV, with the Mano and orchestration, and with containerization, right? Th these are the building blocks of the open community. And we're really excited to host you know, a lot of these uh, uh, projects here. But let me walk you through how we think about and how the community thinks about the life cycle. So this diagram, some of you may have seen it in some of the Linux Foundation pro uh, uh, conferences. But it's a very simple visual that says, first comes projects, then comes products, then comes deployments, then come profits. Profits get reinvested in projects, and the cycle keeps repeating. A successful open source project requires a full life cycle. We've had projects that go through the whole thing, and then they are shelved. And that's OK, right? It didn't create enough value. Projects do need to create value. So let's talk about the projects. Well, we have majority of the projects in networking that are hosted by the Linux Foundation. Obviously, for us, it's really a stack diagram. The data plane projects at the bottom with the NOS at, at next, control plane next, uh, Mano, and then analytics, right? So these are all the projects that we have hosted or are in the process of hosting and are hosted by our partner communities around us, uh, which we collaborate with, right? So that's the project. So now the question is, what's new? Well, what's new is we are announcing that OPX, which is a project uh, open switch is now part of Linux Foundation networking umbrella, right? So this is uh, the seed code came from Dell, and uh, we are really excited that uh, you know Dell Technologies now uh, has has decided to move this into our LFN. LFN uh, community has accepted it. It's going through the induction. It's it's an amazing uh, sort of disaggregation NAS white box open networking software that people can take advantage of. And we're really excited to have this project as part of, of LFN. OK? While we were doing the projects, we also decided that our friend in, a, in this journey together is the standards community. Right? Five years ago, you would have said, oh, it, is it standards that we are going to follow, or is it open source standards, which, is, which becomes de facto? And we changed that mindset, and we are really happy about that because you know you got pretty much some of the largest of the organizations all collaborating, formal agreement, very closely aligned, and very consistent APIs and models, right? And this is important because at the end of the day, you don't want to implement two different fragmented solutions. So very excited about the harmonization that we have been talking about. Okay. And so projects then move to products. And this is where the journey gets exciting. How do you get a commercial ecosystem developed around open source? And how do you make sure that there is business value for the members and non-members to take advantage and then start putting commercial offering for it? All right, so let's see some proof here. All right? A whole set of commercial projects, and this is just one project around ONAP. Um, you got pretty much the largest of the large vendors, the medium-sized vendors, startups. Uh, you got system integrators in there, SWARS in there, uh, silicon companies, huge global ecosystem. All of a sudden, with the latest release in Dublin, that are now part of this commercial ecosystem. Either they are supporting it, or distributing it, or customizing it, or building their products around it. and. For the developers, you will recognize the one uh, circle or the three concentric circles in the middle. This is diversity, right? So the first release of ONAP inside, that's the smallest circle, had maybe five, 10 companies contributing. But as the releases get uh, more and more, the size of contribution from different companies increases the color of the pie uh, of the circle difference. This is a sign of a good open source project. Right? High diversity, equal contribution, and uh, you know, clearly that doesn't mean the, the size of or the contribution from the largest of the large keeps decreasing. It's just everybody else is contributing a lot more. So this brings up the commercial ecosystem. Very important, because that's kind of the products. 
Another example from Linux Foundation is DPDK, right? This is the data plane acceleration project. And it's kind of distributed by commercial vendors. It's consumed downstream by a whole lot of open source projects. And it's in production in some of the largest clouds and, and some of the uh, service providers. Again, you can see the flow of how a project makes it into production, right? And so how do you get it to production? And this is the hard part. This is the boring part. I hate to say it. There is no silver bullet here. Okay? It's just hard work. You know, we call it the plumbing layer, we call it whatever, but how do you do it? Well, you do it with a whole set of proven tactics that include blueprints. So these are use cases that actually have code that is implemented in a reference architecture and a reference model. You have solutions that are built end-to-end, -end, hardware and software included. Uh, obviously, you have use cases that are important to the community. And then very, very important is you have a more formal compliance and verification program. So under LFN, we have something called OVP, which I'll talk about in a bit. Um, these programs are needed to accelerate the deployment. And then you have training, and you have documentation, and you have interrupts and plug fest, right? Just, just work. There's no silver bullet. You have to do all these things to get from products to deployment. And when you do it, you see the success. And that's another example. Look at the deployments that have gone up, right? Uh, you know, I, I won't read it out, but AT&T, China Mobile, Orange, China Telecom, Verizon, Bell, Vodafone, TT, Turk, Geo, O. Oh, you can just read, read the list. Um, from Pox to production, right? Almost 70% of the global mobile subscribers are participating in, in open source projects. So effectively, in just the last five years, we have seen a you know, drastic shift from, from just being you know, a, a lab project to going into production and using open source technology. So we're really excited about that. Now, obviously, one small thing is operators that are participating in LF networking projects are doing six times better. This is just based off public data in grabbing mobile shares, market share in their region. I don't know if it's causation or correlation. You can decide, okay? But I'll take it, all right? So this is good. Um, and then the last part, which is profits. Very exciting. And how do you get to profits, right? And what, how do the deals get done? Well, the good news is, in just the last quarter, all these things came up. I could not fit it in, a, in one slide, right? And our marketing guys could not also. So we'll just leave it like this. Uh, lots of deals. Lots of deals because the op... And, and the deals are very simple. It's like the operator or the end user would say, ah, I want to build it on open source. Who is participating? OK. I feel comfortable because they support my strategy, because I want innovation, I want control, I want you know, faster deployments. So let's just do it, all right? And that's kind of what, uh, what we have seen in, in the commercial deals. So the news then, which we uh, put it on the wire last week uh, in preparation of ONS, is LF networking at, enters the commercial phase. Projects are now doing, going through the commercialization, both with uh, ecosystem and uh, commercial vendors and end user deployments. And obviously, the community keeps growing. We welcome Globe Telecom, uh, one of the largest operators in Philippines, right? 80 million plus subscribers, Starlight, et cetera. Uh, again, we're excited about just the key, uh, uh, key momentum that uh, LF networking is continuing. And then, of course, what's the most important thing that we are focusing on? Deployment. And within deployment, what's the most important? Compliance and verification, because you're going to cut down the interoperability time. So today, we are announcing that um, OEP, oops, sorry, there you go. OEP, or the Compliance and Verification Program, which is uh, partnering with GSMA and CNTT, is issuing the first spec of common NFVI profiles, right? So this is R1. You know, we announced this program at ONS NA in April, and very quickly, the reference models or the profiles through GSMA are being published today. 
okay? Um, and this is, again, one of the pieces of the overall compliance program, because the rest of it comes from you know, the WIMS, OpenStack, uh, ONAP, uh, from a MANO perspective, and VNF's uh, onboarding from, from that. And OPNFE is going to sort of do the test tooling and automation to uh, comply and, and get the VNFs onboarded very quickly. Uh, we're seeing tremendous momentum on this. And um, you know, we are even going to have a, a webinar on this uh, through SDX Central uh, to uh, explain what the details are and how you can participate. But go ahead and, and kind of look at it as well. So this is a really exciting uh, piece of work. Um, and that's where we are. So where do we go now, right? There are three things, edge, access, and cloud native. And I'm not going to go through all of these, because you will have keynote presentations from all of this. And let's start off with edge. Where's the edges, right? So we have this age-old question, what do you define edge as? And what's edge computing and what's not? And the good news is, with a, a project called Glossary, uh, we have taken a very proactive approach to define edge as having three characteristics. Proximity of compute and storage, responsiveness, so 5 to 20 milliseconds of latency, and mobility for connected cars and things like that. Right. So an application that requires all three is an edge, appli edge application, and, and, and that framework is, is, is for edge. So if you extrapolate that, not all IoT is edge. You know, you can't have a sensor waking up every week and then dumping data into a centralized public cloud. That's not an edge application. Simultaneously, not all edge is IoT, right? It could be a telecom edge, it could be a cloud edge, enterprise edge, or an IoT edge. And our goal here at LF Edge is to unify this across many, many of these verticals. And the primary verticals that are in interested in this is obviously manufacturing, oil, gas, co uh, retail, commerce, homes, automotive, et cetera. So really uh, exciting things happening here on the edge and under the LF edge. And if you're not already you know, uh, a, a partner, member, community supporter, please go look at it, right? And so what's the announcement? The announcement is that we have two new projects that are being uh, inducted to LF Edge. Uh, they're Beetle and Fledge. Uh, they are frameworks that help you, uh, you know, get into the Cloud Edge. So this one came from uh, from Baidu and uh, Beetle, and then LF Edge, uh, which is a uh, which is an application framework for the industrial IoT. Uh, that one is also going to be inducted, and we have a new. Uh, set of members, obviously, this keeps growing, uh, along with our existing projects like Acrino, Edgex Foundry, et cetera. So uh, good progress here. The press release is going to be out right after this keynote. So we're excited to welcome these two new projects. Okay. Um, and then one takeaway for you on the edge, you thought cloud revolution was big and you missed it. Edge is going to be four times the size. Okay. And it's going to hit $4 trillion in economy. So if you're not going to participate in Edge, well, good luck, right? Um, but let's move on. So access. RAN is a, going through a significant change here, OK? And we have a whole keynote from Orange on, on this. But what I want to do is I want to sort of say that ORAN is now software, or RAN disaggregation is leading to a whole bunch of things in software. And we are hosting the software community uh, for doing this. And we're starting to see a lot of progress being made, not just from the ORAN Alliance, which is defining the specs, but from the software community that is developing the software. Um, to the industry consortiums on creating test beds uh, for testing the RAN. Okay, so we're really excited to partner with, with the ecosystem here. But that's your next big thing that is going through the change. And you will hear more about this keynote. And then finally, on cloud native, everybody has heard it. Some of you may have gone through tutorial. Dan's going to be here talking about it um, as a keynote here. But the thing that is important for the telecom industry is we're living in a world of hybrid virtual machines and containers, right? As, as VNFs go through CNFs, 
right? There's some of them needs to be rewritten, some of them are migration. There's a lot of work that's being done by both CNCF, Kubernetes, and LF networking community. Um, and we are going to collaborate here to make sure that uh, we have a good set of understanding on what the employment is, what the migration is. So clearly, big ticket item here, um, and you're going to hear a lot more about this. Um, so when we bring it all together, it's a very simple open source world, right? You have edge, open, open access. You come in, you get to open edge. You go into the core, and you have a whole bunch of projects that are dedicated to do their functions. And then the standards organization, like MEC or uh, IIC, collaborate to make sure that whatever spec comes in is implemented properly. OK? So that's the whole picture. Um, I want to leave you with sort of three predictions for 2025 um, as we walk through the whole journey. The first one is, sorry, it's more of the same. OK? So we, we tend to do this, you know, 6G, 7G, speeds, feeds, devices, softwareization. We're on a pretty good roll here as an industry, and I think it'll continue. The second big prediction is edge compute overtakes cloud compute. OK? And this is where I believe that telcos have an advantage. They have an advantage of location. Okay? That's your smart central office. That's your radio base station, where you can actually put compute and storage and run a software stack on it with zero touch automation. Right? Huge progress there. And I believe that we will see public clouds playing, playing catch up on this. Uh, I'm sure they're going to you know, come up with a very innovative strategy. But at least the initial, um, initial uh, feedback is that this is going big. And then, of course, and, and by the way, I can stand behind these predictions. But the third one, I can definitely stand behind. It's guaranteed to happen. We'll still be working on next-gen networking. OK? So key, that's the key takeaway. All right. So with that, I think uh, I have one more thing. And that is we're going to move and change Open Networking sub, uh, Summit to now ONES, or we are going to expand the scope of it. It's going to be Open Networking and Edge Summit. OK, starting next year in April in North America, uh, in LA. Uh, it's going to, you know, we have seen so much excitement and enthusiasm that, uh, you know, we've decided to do this. So please spread the word around. It's ONES. I know people like pronouncing it different ways, but it is ONES. I'm going to repeat it three times. Um, and then in the fall, we will have ONES in Europe. And hear this, right here. OK? So we're going to have the same venue. We love it so much that uh, we're going to keep it here. All right? So with that, I would say enjoy, learn, meet your peers, take advantage of you know, some of the smartest people that have developed this technology. And with that, I'm going to thank you.